All right, and welcome back to episode five of the FPS podcast. We are joined by none other than Black Widow IRL, the last of the origin stories. We finally come the to the last a, Airbender. It's a it's the like last the last one. chapter of the first book. Um, the last one. <laughs> the last book of the first chapter. The last book of the the second book. Yes. <laughs> the, I'm the, the movie adaptation of the. Well, um, Black Widow, welcome, welcome. Um, how are you feeling today? Um, I'm, you know, I'm feeling great. It's been a good week. Been a good week, yeah. yeah. It's good. <laughs> um, anyway, we're going to go deep into the mind of Black Widow origin stories. Yes, oh we're going, we're going we're back it. in time. Go the last one. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're finally doing it. So, <laughs> I think Lefui should take this segment because he's done it so well in previous times. Have I? Yes, <laughs> I think. I think, you, I think you've been intro well, the, the origin I think so. stories. I think so. Oh, oh, I'm scared. He's <laughs> the I'm best blushing. we got. I don't do well under pressure. Out of two people, he's the best we got. <laughs> well, so fifty-fifty chance, you know. Kind of coming into gaming streaming everything like that uh we'll start i think with twitch just kind of in general so Mm -hmm. what what got you into hearing about twitch or what was your first stream you watched what kind of got you to be interested in this thing yeah so some of the first streams that i ever watched were Fortnite. unfortunately um wildly (laughs) (laughs) that was a good episode Um, no so when i first saw people creating content Mm -hmm. um with gaming which is something i wanted to do for about four years before i started Mm. um it was on youtube Mm -hmm. it was seeing youtube videos of people you know playing games it was pewdiepie it was a lot of other people who i can't even remember their names of it's just people goofing off and they'd be playing things like smash Mm. um to me it was never connected pc because i didn't get a pc until i started streaming gotcha um so it was it was very much i would see gameplay of people playing games people playing minecraft people Mm -hmm. playing a bunch of different nintendo games on youtube and i knew that it was something that i wanted to do and for many many reasons it just never felt like a good fit or a Mm -hmm. good time um when i was and i was living in la and I started to know a bunch of people who were on Twitch. Mm. And around that time was when you were starting to hear uh, it make a little bit more of the main waves mm-hmm. that are going out there because Ninja was doing the big things. All yeah, the things were okay. happening with Drake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Playing with them and all yeah. that. Yep. And I, I remember having a conversation with one of my friends and I was like, I've been talking about doing this for years and now there's a kid like all over the radio and all over the news making millions mm-hmm. Yeah, on mainstream this. news. Yeah, yeah like, like, like mainstream yep. news. I remember, like, not five, ten years ago, like, gaming was so taboo. And just the like, only no, time, yeah, the only time you saw that. gaming in the news was because people claimed it causes violence. Yeah. yeah. The only time you saw it. <laughs> only time it was ever making waves is, is, is everyone just talking about how gaming was a bad career. And you, because I, I very much grew up in an area where it was, like, physical sports, physical sports. Yeah, the uh-huh. the South. If you were playing video games, even mostly in high school, and it wasn't just something casually that yeah, you were yeah. doing before you went to bed then you were a nobody who was going to live in your parents basement um, or garage <laughs> that's me um, or, gra- or garage for the rest of your life and i just and it always kind of stuck with me um but i, w- I was living in la and i was working with a bunch of talent and influencers so mm. they were a bunch of people who were online creators for other things mm. um so they were doing stuff on instagram and youtube and, and things like that not really gaming focused but then a few of them in the last one of the last places that i worked um i was working with a bunch of people who were at optic Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just like, again, I was like, (laughs) Oh, I really like this. Oh, I really like this. And then I started with, and then I had an opportunity to come to where I got to work with, um, a lot of members of like, um, face and a few of those others because yeah, it was going to be crazy. Axe. Yeah, because it was going to be <laughs> Axe. And it wasn't, it wasn't me being a part of the content. I was more, I was behind the scenes helping run right, you were production? a thing with or... them. Yeah. Okay. So I would basically campaign management. So I would oh, find okay. the talent. I would find right. the talent and I would go, you are a good fit here. Um, well, and handle all contracts and things like that. I feel like that's a good spot to be to kind of absorb how mm-hmm. to do things. And you like mm-hmm. witness a lot of like great people do what they do and kind of absorb yeah. a lot of good traits from that. Because mm-hmm. I, I draw similarly to that where it was like, hey, I'm watching a lot of good people do stuff and I have no idea what I'm doing yeah. <laughs> at yeah, all. Yeah. So the cool thing that I got to do there outside of, again, having heard my whole life that that was a ridiculous thing and anytime mm-hmm. I'd been interested, it was a ridiculous thing. I was negotiating their paychecks and they weren't small. <laughs> and, and, you know, once you saw that, but, but outside of that, I had to literally do research on all of these people who were going to be in these campaigns. And I was seeing how long they had been doing this. These weren't just people who had popped up overnight. The way a lot of Instagram influencers and mm-hmm. YouTube influencers and, you know, um, all of these can just pop TikTok or can just pop up if something goes viral. Typically, that that's not how gaming content creators work. You work for it. 
Mm-hmm. You build up a following. You do all of this. There's not really somebody who's going to game for their very first time on Twitch and instantly get a host by someone like Ninja and go viral and everyone's going to stick with them. That's not yeah. <laughs> how Twitch works. Twitch Wait, isn't really? just an instant. Twi- it's a success <laughs> yeah. every time, 100%. Twitch just, there, there's no case. Like You can get the largest host in the world on Twitch and it's still not going to be instant success. Oh, absolutely not, no. People aren't just going to follow you because you were there. They are only going to come back and watch you and all of this because of that. So, yeah, long story short on that, I was started getting really involved with them I, I switched to another job i actually ended up moving in with random roommates and one of them had been streaming for a while um and he seemed to be having fun with it and i was miserable in my job and i was miserable with a lot of things going on um in my life and everything there and i was always playing video games anyway mm-hmm. i was playing a lot of more like injustice and mortal Kombat and everything right. on my xbox um, and I was just sitting there and then I realized I was browsing through one day and I realized that that's all I had is I had a TV, I had like a folding chair, um, and my Xbox and my controller and my Xbox headset. None of it was fancy cause I wasn't using it for anything other than right, yeah, to I be mean, in my room that Xbox turned off every 45 minutes. Um, but I was, that's always yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cause I bought it used. And so I, um, was sitting there and I was like, Oh, there's a Twitch app. And when you download it, it always asks, do you want to sync your mic? Do you want to sync all mm-hmm. of this stuff? And I was like, oh, sure, what the heck? And then I just was like, why not? Why not, yep. And yeah. I literally just, I, I sat there, and I was like, okay, I'll try this tomorrow after work. I came back, I sat there, there was no camera, there was no anything. I was sitting in front of my TV. I was sitting in a chair on the floor so that my headset, because um, my controller needed to be plugged in, and my headset needed to be in my controller. And I was sitting there, and I just went live, and I started playing Injustice. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I remember I was just sitting there, just not doing anything the whole time. And then some guy came into the chat and was just like, wait, you're a girl. Because my voice was coming <laughs> through. Because I was just trying to talk. Because that was the one thing. I looked up what makes a good Twitch streamer. And the one thing that I read and that I still tell everyone is just you have to learn to talk. You yes. have to learn to talk I, to I, nobody I before agree. you can talk to people. Because um, if people are browsing through your channel, they're not going to stop if you're not. Yep talking one of the, one of the uh unlearned traits of a, uh, traits of a streamer is that you just can talk to a blank wall for yep. hours on end you talk <laughs> yeah. to your character your car your ball People whatever it is crazy but hey you know it works uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah talking to a blank wall yeah no it's a big thing i hear a lot of people um who sometimes will pop in and they'll be like, I don't understand. Like, I'm playing. I'm pretty decent at the game. Like, mm-hmm. especially in the Rocket League scene, there are a lot of people who are really great. And they're like, I'm really good at Rocket League. And they're like, but no one's really staying in my chat. And I'm just like, are you communicating? And they're like, well, no, no one's there. Yeah, I can't and I'm talk just like, to but they don't, nothing. Yeah. I was like, but they don't have a reason to stop if you are not talking. Unless you're somebody whose name that they already know, it's very hard to get away with just not yeah. saying a word. Yeah, and I even see it, like, on the case of, like, people who have thousands of viewers. Like, there'll be times, I'd say, five to ten minutes where there's only, like, two people talking. And yep. they, they're still they're still doing great. Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're still rolling with it. And then it comes back. Yeah. So you have to kind of catch yourself in those moments be like, I need to create an environment. Yeah, well... It the, doesn't yeah. create me. <laughs> yeah, the other or the other solution is just go into any popular streamer's Twitch chat and just start putting your link and telling yes. people yeah, you're yeah, about to start streaming and come every, watch this. That's how yeah. every big streamer uh, is made. You do that. That's, that's how every big yeah, streamer is made. That is a secret. The number one key to <laughs> success <laughs> is just saying, please come watch my stream yeah. or check I'm about out to, my friend. Yeah. Or I'll, 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 I gotta go. I'm about to start streaming. So. <laughs> oh God. Pass Everyone come here. Uh, <laughs> I am starting <laughs> stream in words. seven minutes. I'll be right back. See you guys. Seven minutes and 43 seconds. Yeah, I got it. You want to know when it's the most heartbreaking? When someone's actually in your chat for probably like a good hour and they're chill and they're relaxed and they're amazing mm-hmm. and they're building up a rapport and then they're like, well, I'm going to go uh, stream now if any of you guys want to come watch me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And I'm just like, wanna... no! I'm just like, I trusted you. I trusted you. You came into this chat, you got to know people. You think that's what we do here? Well, so uh, so starting with Injustice. You did yeah. Injustice for a little while. Um, so I was playing Injustice and Mortal Kombat and things like that. And um, I was having a few people come in. I, I realized pretty quick that it was something I, I enjoyed doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was not taken well by the, the friends that were in my life. Um, but I didn't care. For once, I was just kind of... I'm, I'm, I'm typically known for very much caring about what people think a lot. But I didn't. I just knew that it was something that I enjoyed doing. It was helping me not be lonely. Mm-hmm. It was helping, mm-hmm. you know, pass the time. I was, I was working from home. Um, I was in a really crappy job. I had a feeling that the job wasn't going to last much longer. Um, and I was just sitting there and I was like, this is, this is passing my time. I'm going to be doing this anyway. Yep. Why not? Um, about 
uh, the first two weeks that I streamed without um, a camera, and then I got a Connect. It was really hard to buy a Connect um, alone. It's really no one uses Connects anymore. But I had an Xbox. Um, <laughs> Archaic so, streaming, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. devices. So, um, you know, I was mass searching things like Offer Up and Five Miles for a Connect because hey, you I mean, couldn't buy it new anywhere unless you bought yeah. a new Xbox or like a bundle or like mm-hmm. yeah because they were trying to get rid of them and things like that. So I ended up getting one off of Offer Up used. Um, I plugged it in. I still have some old clips from that. It's just a square. You can't have any overlay. And I just remember knowing instinctively, because like I said, I've wor- I worked in marketing for six years mm-hmm. before I did this. So I instantly knew if I wanted to keep doing this, I needed to improve my stream quality. Right. Um, and I absolutely could not. Like I just, it, I had one little camera and I started having a few other people come in. Um, and a lot of them, you know, at first were really weird. I'm a girl. I have like <laughs> yeah. four, fa- four viewers. They're just coming in and being kind of weird. And I was like, I really want this to have an overlay if I'm going to keep doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember I went to Best Buy. Um, I was mass looking. I was looking for any laptop. And again, I'm really, I was Mac before I started streaming. Boo. So I knew nothing. I knew Get nothing. Out of you all. have an iPhone. I know. Get out of <laughs> I still have a Mac laptop. Both you guys yeah. suck. That was eight years um, ago. <laughs> yeah, no, but I ended up, there was this sale because it was, this was in December. So there was a lot of these Christmas sales mm-hmm. and they yep. were like big flash sale on this laptop. Um, and I, I literally went through offer up, found this guy who had, he was selling a monitor mount with two like cheap, just, you know, monitors that just come with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, okay, I have that. I have that. I'll use my phone as chat. I can get this little laptop and I can plug in from everything I learned so I can do stream labs and I can have an overlay. That's all I want. I went and I bought a capture card and everything and I went and I ordered this laptop and it's like, it'll be ready in two days. It was all this crazy Christmas stuff. Um, and I went and picked it up. And I guess I'd never looked at any of the specs because I was excited. You've seen it. It's a little paperweight in my room. The laptop was this big. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> from straight out of the vo- box, it takes 10 minutes to turn on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing would load. It couldn't run Streamlabs. It turned on, though. There were, there, it, it did do what it was advertised so, to do. It wasn't it was even that. I had, I had a capture card and an Xbox, <laughs> and there was no there was no HDMI port. On the freaking oh pe- yeah, so on this little laptop, I it. couldn't do it. It was yeah, pointless. Just like looking at the computer, looking at the monitors, it, like, yeah. uh, like why is this not? I don't just do yeah. it. <laughs> Go I, in the USB I, slot. No, yeah, I sat there. I was like, what do I need? Should I buy an adapter and all of this? And I just knew at the time that I could not because I was paying um, for a rather large apartment on my own. Um, I had like my room and section on my own, and I knew that I couldn't buy a PC that I needed for this. Then I searched and I searched and I searched, and everyone literally, people still are like, that doesn't exist. You can Google lease a gaming PC, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. there are you have to look through the valid ones, but I and it's a horrible deal. It's an <laughs> I would imagine, yes, horrible <laughs> deal. You're getting the, the lowest bottom grade that can run PC. Um, running off of there. I ended up leasing a gaming PC and I was like, okay, I'll just be PC. I learned very quickly that no, I couldn't even stream a game from that and do it. So I still had the Xbox. I had the capture card. I started streaming from the PC. Um, I got my overlays. I was very happy with it. Mm -hmm. I watched a bunch of people at that point and I was like, okay, I know what I want and I kind of want it simple. I didn't want a lot of things going on. Um, But I was at that point because I was looking for ways to grow. I was a part of a lot of those, um, which I do not recommend, and I will say this confidently. They are Most of them are scams that are only uh, helping the number one person who started this. But I was part of a lot of those discords that were like, hey, we have this huge discord group. Join our blank unit. Join uh, our yeah, blank yeah. gaming. Everyone supports um, each everyone other. Everyone supports yeah. each other. Da, da, da. And the main person that it's only typically supporting is the person who started it, who had enough of a following to say, hey, I can make this work for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a couple of their friends who happened to fall into place. Um, <laughs> but I was like a in pyramid there, for some reason. <laughs> and, I, and I will say this without shape. Yeah, it's very, very, you know, it's funny how that works. Um, but I was like, and I learned very quickly with it. <laughs> That it wasn't actually a community or a family or anything the way they, you know, they market it yeah. out there. And I was just like, no, I don't really like this. But I knew how to take advantage of it because at least for any of those communities, if you posted in the going live sections, at least one or two people would come from it. You know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. At least one or two people would. You know, it's not going to make you the person who started it. It's not going to be this huge community. But at least one or two people would. So I joined 10 of them. And I was like, if you guys are going to do this, <laughs> I went to all of their friends ones and I would just start posting in the going live section, which okay. they wanted. I would be active in the chats. I'd be yep. talking to people. I would go watch theirs. I got to know the people who were actually active in the groups because it's so surprising. You go into there and there are people who are trying their best and they're wanting to meet new people mm-hmm. and all of this. So I'd get to know all of them. And so I would post in all 10 of them when I went live and it went from where I was having two viewers to where I was having about 20 viewers. 
yeah. um, with everything. And they were actually people who I was supporting their streams and I was watching their streams as well. Um, and then one of them, I actually, um, I stumbled into a stream. His name is One King Swiss. He still pops into my streams sometimes. I mean, he's one of the first people to follow me out of all the groups. I came in um, and I was creeping in a stream one day and I was just kind of, you know, looking for new games to play. And he was playing this stupid ass game. <laughs> um, things were going everywhere. They were shooting things and it was Rumble. It was Rumble and Rocket League. And that was my it's first introduction. It was my first introduction to Rocket League. I what is they, this? I'm pretty sure they were drinking and I just saw boxing gloves shooting a ball. And that's all that I thought that Rocket League was. Um, and there were these cars driving around, and I was like, so it's a car with a boxing glove and a and a switchy swatchy um, and that a sounds ball. sounds exactly like my first well, day. I, yeah. I, I remember, though, that uh, at Season 1 LAN, they showed the trailer for Rumble. Uh -huh. That was the first time I saw Rumble in, like, a crowd of people. And I remember it was, like, the trailer was the car was going up, and then he gets, like, booted. Was, was how it went. And everyone in the crowd just lost it. They were, like, so excited for Rumble. But when you come down later to the... Like, I started yeah. playing Season 3. It's the weirdest thing, yep. man. <laughs> like, yep. just, just, like, I don't know. You're just like, why is it... Why, yeah, why is, is it... Why is it... That's just in there? Okay. <laughs> why is Some of our best modes are Rumble. You kind of, like, grow accustomed to it, but just, like, just going into the game and just be like, oh, there it is. Yep, there. <laughs> Boxing cool. glove mode thing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was my first introduction, and I was like, oh, no, this game is dumb. But I, again, I was on Xbox and I had Game Pass and it was on Game Pass. So I was like, what the hell? I'd been streaming for a month mm -hmm. um, and I got, I downloaded it. I decided to play it on stream the next day. I scored a goal. I posted that <laughs> <laughs> recently. I scored a goal and I was like, oh, and I was just having a lot of fun. But my problem with it is when I came into it, as you typically see still, no matter if you have five viewers, 20 viewers, 1,000 viewers, people are going to come in and tell you how to play oh, the yes. game. Oh, yes. My favorite thing about streaming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my favorite thing about streaming is people are going to come in and they're going to tell the you how wizards. to play yes. the game. So my thing is that I knew nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I knew nothing about it. And they were like, so you go over to this and you're going to, they were like, oh, all you've seen is Rumble. Play Rumble. So um, I didn't play casuals for my first three weeks of playing uh, Rocket League. I'd actually never gone over to normal. I had only played extras modes. Mm. I had never played casuals. I had yeah. never done warm ups. I'd never done anything because my first time playing Rocket League was live on stream. <laughs> um, so I was immediately thrown into ranked, um, and I was immediately oh, people being like, experience. "Oh, I can play with you." Because again, I'd never really played a competitive game where people were carrying people or people were any of those things. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So people were just like, "Let's play." I'm just like, "Oh, like any other game I play." Yeah, let's play. Yeah. That makes sense. No. <laughs> um, I ended yeah, up, I remember, I, I played for like a month and I did all of my placements and in every single one of them besides Rumble, I got bronze. And then in Rumble, I got mm -hmm. silver. <laughs> um, and it was in every single one of them. And that's what I had. That was my rankings. Straight up my first time playing Rocket League was not casual, was not training, was not yep. anything. I was playing ranked. Yep, same. Um, yep, I remember and that. that is the longest climb of the world is actually getting placed bronze one because most people don't. And most people aren't bronze. See, and you what, wonder yeah. why you're playing bronze matches against people who very <laughs> confidently know how to play this game. Um, yeah, when I started, I started out bottom of the barrel, Prospect 1. Like mm -hmm. that, That's basically bronze nowadays. Yeah. That's the lowest rank in the game. But yeah, Prospect 1, just like, oh, mm -hmm. that was the lowest rank in the game. And they yep. put me there. Woo! And I just had to crawl out of the pit, man. That was well, so for you guys who didn't play Season 1, if you know how Season 1 worked for Rocket League. I believe no, so. I everyone was unranked, and your placements worked as just you. St everyone was 100 MMR. And you just there you weren't there weren't catapults if you want all your placements you just you started there the whole way all the way up but at the same time <laughs> no one had played the game yet yeah so exactly so, so it was like a level playing it field. wasn't like except your second for SARP match people. yeah there, was, there was the previous game so yeah, people couldn't come SARP, from that so, yeah. so I, I suppose there'd be a little bit but not to the yeah. oh not yeah to no the not to that extreme to, no. to today no 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 well so so that's that's where you've come to Rocket League so if we can fast forward just a little bit to where FPS now wow you're here so how did we get to here, like, do you, do you recall back From to the, the origin, of this, the conception here. of this idea? Oh, I, I recall very clearly. Um, at this point, I had, um, I'd been in the, this was March. This was last March. I'd been streaming for what, three and a half, three and a half months, mm -hmm. four months probably by the time this happened. About four and a half months into streaming, um, I think I had, you had popped in. To one of my streams and just said hello and dropped a follow and things like that um and i've you know been in your streams a couple times um towards the end of march i got a raid it was one of my first large raids it was actually um the week before i'd gotten a raid from athena 
And it was like mm-hmm. mind yep. breaking for me. Yes. Um, <laughs> it was just like mind melting for me. Um, at the time, and it was awesome. About a week later, uh, King Ranny um, came in with a raid, and he was like, "I've heard about a week, and I think you'd been coming around my streams for a couple weeks." Mm-hmm. Um, and because I, I remember it was a lot of events. I had the Athena raid. Um, you had been very active. We were all. I was starting to get to know the Rocket League Twitter scene, which is its own. <laughs> and there's bubble, a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> which, of which is its own <laughs> world. The Rocket League Twitter scene is, is its own world. Um, and then Randy came in with a raid, and he was like, I've heard a lot of good things about you from Lando. <laughs> um, and he was like, so I wanted to stop by, and he brought the community over, and he was popping in there. Um, and um, you had sent a tweet out, like, two days later that was like, normal people, are, I'm going to stream 20 hours a week. Like Widow, <laughs> I'm going to stream 20 hours a day. Yeah. Um, because back then I could stream 20 hours a day. <laughs> Um, but you did that, and then I think it was it was just normal rolling, streaming, getting to know, growing the community, all these things happening, and I was just fed up. <laughs> I was getting very happy with the online community that I was becoming a part of, Yes. Mm-hmm. and I was realizing it, it, it's when I was falling in love with Twitch and streaming and Rocket League. Finding Rocket League helped me fall in love with it and realize this was something I, I desperately wanted to mm-hmm. do. And it was the only thing I wanted to do. And people used to ask me how so early on I could stream for 18 hours a day, like every single day. It was 14, 16, 18, 20. You know what I mean? Rolling through. And it was because everything else in my life was horrible. And that, the yeah. second I logged on, it was my favorite place in the world to be. I remember, um, I remember those days of getting home from work and just being like, I would just would love nothing more than to just drown myself in Twitch right now. Yeah, <laughs> it, it didn't matter. And then how, I go to work and yeah. I'm like, I want to go home and stream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, didn't, so it didn't matter how tired I was or anything. I just wanted to go live. I wanted to hang out with those people. And I sent out a tweet, and it was in April, early April, and I was just like, I just want all my friends to move in with me, to move to LA and get a house with me, or like come move over here and get a house with me. And a bunch of people, I actually pulled this up uh, about a month ago, but a bunch of people were responding, and then you sent a message, and you were like, no, seriously. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you were like, no, seriously, I wanna, I, I've want i been wanting to do this. Because you responded to the tweet, and you were like, eyes. And I was like, whoa. Um, and then we, we were messaging about it. And you were like, well, yeah, I've been talking about this, and I didn't know you guys. At the yeah, time. we lived together. Yeah, I did not we, know. Right? Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't did know we? you were scripts. Well, at that point, I mean. Yeah. Um, but he was like me and my roommate uh, Lafui. I remember I thought your name was Lafi. Yes. Uh, Lafi Taffy. Um, Lafi Taffy. That was me and my roommate. Well, to me, as I was reading it, me and my roommate Lafi um, and some friends who were, have been talking about doing this for a while, and people, you know, like things fall through, or people aren't serious, or it's yeah. a conversation that happens, yeah. and all of this. And I was like, yeah, I've been really, really wanting to do this. At that time, I had some friends who were really into it, and then they were like, no, but honestly, if we're actually serious about it, I live across the country. I couldn't do that. And again, mm-hmm. it was those, those mutual conversations. Yeah, it's, where it it's just, difficult. So many people don't realize that you're serious when you're like, oh, I want to start a house with my friends. And they're like, oh, yeah. And then you're like, okay, but here's details. And they're like, I wasn't being serious. I just want to, yeah, but I just I want to, but I have yeah. no initiative. It was fun talking about it. It now was very go fun talking thing. about it. I'm going to go back <laughs> yeah. to my normal just life flirting right with now. the idea yeah, of no, um, doing it. Yeah. It's, because for, it's so hard. Yeah, because people have a fantasy about things a lot of the times, but they're also comfortable and happy with where they are Yeah. Um, a lot of the times. Um, and for me, this is all that I wanted. And I remember you, and I was asking, and, and I was asking you uh, who were the other people, and you mentioned Scribs. Um, and then you mentioned Ranny, and I was like, oh, because something had happened, uh, like, two weeks before where, um, I was, like, needing help on stream or something, mm-hmm. and Ranny happened to be lurking in my stream, and I had no idea. And he was like, oh, if you need someone to talk to, um, yeah. I'm here, and I can help you. Um, and I was like, oh, that's great. And I would had, like, this long hours conversation, like, helping me with stuff with stream and stuff like that. And then two weeks later, you were like, yeah, I'm wanting to do this house. And also with my friend, Ranny, because yeah. I don't know if you even knew that I knew Ranny at that point. And I was like, oh, 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 oh okay. And then we just started talking about it more. And mm-hmm. then I didn't think that it was going to happen. And then we, I remember the big thing was planning to go to RLCS. And I didn't think that I was going to go. And then I was like, no, I have to go. I really want to go. And then I remember um, Ranny almost didn't go. I do remember that, yeah. I, I had to I had to talk to that boy. Oh, oh boy. Up, to, uh, up to like three days before <laughs> he was like, you he were was going, like <laughs> I don't think I know. Him and United drove up from Texas, met me in Kentucky because mm-hmm. I was staying in Kentucky temporarily. Because um, when we first started talking about this, I was in California. Um, I was in California. 
Um, but then I had to go to Kentucky for a little bit because my, my you know, my God. lease was ending. I drove, I drove across. My with, God. In, in the time oh. that I've been streaming, I have driven across the country, literally from like New York area to California four times. Oh, I, um, I know I say this every time, but I hate driving so oh. much. Oh, it doesn't make me just so bored and angry. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're in a car with me. Oh, driving, a, driving a concert. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, Gosh, but they, they drove alone. up. Oh. We, we got to oh. RLCS and... We were just like, okay, are we sure we want to do this? Remember, we all sat on the floor passing around Tito. Yeah. Yep. Just talking yeah, about it. Just being like, passing the Tito around. Do we really yep. want to do it? And then we were like, Hot okay. Tito. And at the last day, we tweeted it out. And we were like, all right. Yeah, and we took that picture at the Prudential Center. The that little, little gif. It was uh, a fun time. Yeah, yeah. Well, so then from that that transition, too, is... Uh, so how, how was that process for getting out here, actually? Like, what, what, what was that like? Because we talked... Lando and I didn't have to move very far. <laughs> I mean, I, I had to you know? initially. But, yeah, initially, but yeah. once once you were already in once San Diego, I was here, yeah. It was kind of easy. So you had a, a quite the experience. So. Um, so I had I was living in LA, and we were talking about moving to San Diego. Very convenient. Um, no, I had to because I actually met you guys right before I made that drive because I yeah. came to the party, oh, the party yeah, I at your party. house the night before. I, miss I was so hungover <laughs> the next morning that I slept through the checkout alarm had to drive back to la yeah, get the last <laughs> of my stuff and then drive that day to arizona mm-hmm. and it was so sad because i didn't want to go because i knew i wanted to end up back in san diego and i was just so the whole time i was just so sad because i was like i'm serious i want to do this house i want to make it work but mm-hmm. i'm literally driving as far away <laughs> right now as i can get so i was there and then rlcs we decided we were going to do it and then when it was decided um i drove down the plan was I was going to drive down um, through Texas and across, and we were going to do... Do you guys remember that oh. we moved in at the beginning of October, but mm-hmm. the original plan was that we were not going to move in until February? Into February, like beginning of March. Like the very initial plans, yes. Yeah. Uh, just um, so we could get our bearings, but so I So we mean, talked about yeah. that. Yeah, and we found then a house that worked. Yeah, and yeah. then suddenly we were like, oh, what if we do December? And then suddenly we were moving in at the beginning of October. <laughs> yeah. But like, um, and then more months. But yeah, um, but so we were planning on moving um, towards the end of September because TwitchCon was perfect and we were going to do that. Um, but then I actually drove across a month before because I had puppies and I wanted them to have a puppy. I gave birth <laughs> um, to my daughter. <laughs> I, I, I drove across the country so they could deliver Poppy. Um, <laughs> yes. I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have done that for you, sir. <laughs> you um, delivered. You, you received. I would not yeah. have drove that for you. <laughs> I drove down to Kentucky to <laughs> That's how much Texas because I, I didn't want to do it. I drove down to Kentucky to Texas. Oh, met Ranny. Lord. I had Rocket and Poppy in the car. Um, and then we drove from Texas across um, to San Diego just to bring you guys <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Poppy. And for all of that to happen, um, and then after that was over, we did the Disney trip. We hung out, yeah, super excited. We that. drove back. Oh my god! To Texas, no. and then I had to. I was supposed to drive back the next day, and I couldn't. I was mm. so tired. I needed the whole day to sleep, and then I drove back the next day um, <laughs> up to Kentucky, and then a month later, did that TwitchCon, whole yeah. thing again. Oh, huh. And I remember. And I, I will say this. I really do hope TwitchCon doesn't get canceled because my first experience for uh, my first experience for TwitchCon was so tiring. Yeah. Because I had just driving. spent because we had a yeah, lot of I mean, stuff and it wasn't us sharing the car like we did the first time. We both had our yeah, own cars. Yeah, and stuff. Rainy that. That's just insane. So I because I spent the day driving down to Rainy in Texas and then we spent days driving across and stopping and it was so tired. And I was so exhausted and running on so little sleep because we wanted to make it and as much time as we went because we were plans because we were going to move stuff into the house. We were moving yeah. stuff into the house. Uh, a week before. A week before. T- um, and we weren't even, <laughs> yeah. we even going to do it the night. We, we got, oh, the, yeah, we got there that. two days before Twitch, three yeah. days before TwitchCon. Yeah, yeah. Um, like a, little, oh, wow. a two and a half because we got there at night. Um, but we weren't even going to do anything the next day. We were just going to relax or whatever. Mm-hmm. But we got there and we were like, okay, let's go move some stuff now. Oh, there's a couch in yeah, there. Yeah, we got dinner yeah. and let's we decided couch. to get a couch. And then we decided yeah. to go do that. And we were moving in from the second we got there. And then we had a party. And yeah, I remember I, remember I was the so party. exhausted. I remember I was so Me and tired. Parties. <laughs> I was just laying there and I was like, I'm so happy. I'm going to die. Um, and so the party was happening. And then I we think were you moving did 23 jello shots. Big, yeah, I took 23 jello shots. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, I remember. 
um, that. Ju- and I, still, <laughs> I took 23 jello shots the first hour of the party before the yeah. majority of people were <laughs> oh there. My God. I fell asleep on the couch, woke up when most people were just getting there, like, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> um, and then we had TwitchCon. <laughs> yeah, then yeah. Twitch, the whole weekend and at it, TwitchCon. And I remember by the last day of TwitchCon, I was just like, I'm so miserably tired yeah. and so miserably sore, and I can't move and I can't function. Um, and then, and then the second TwitchCon was over, we were moving into the house. Yep. Um, it was, there was no stopping that whole week. And I just remember that I would love to experience TwitchCon. Not yeah, without yeah, you know, a million things happening. Well, so hopefully, hopefully it doesn't yeah. get canceled. Yeah. We'll see. Well, so transitioning out of this topic, one last question though. I've asked everybody, so we got to close it out. Ah, uh, the good question. Um, so I think I know the answer to this, um, cause it's kind of recent. But for you, Absolutely. what would be your greatest accomplishment or achievement while being Under with FPS? FPS yes. The time from October to present day. Oh, so much. Um, we've created, we started a YouTube channel. Um, I love the videos that we put out. So us all doing that has been wonderful. Um, I think while living in this house, I hit 10K and 15K um, followers. Mm-hmm. Um, we, like, literally um, joining an org. Um, that, that's pretty that awesome. Nice. That, yeah. <laughs> um, joining, joining an org, um, was pretty awesome. That happened yesterday. Yep. Uh, quite, amazing. quite substantial. Hi. Right, so, um, so. Congratulations. Uh, officially <laughs> content creator for Space Station Gaming. So that was epic. Um, literally everything, literally, actually, I don't know, just being able to tell people that I live in a content house with my friends and the, cause so many people are like, wait, what, how did that happen? And I'm just like, Oh yeah. They were like, how did they find you? And I'm like, no, we all just met yeah. on the internet and we decided to all move Car soccer. into a house together. We were all rocket league content creators. Um, and it, it just blows everyone's minds away. Um, so much, so much wonderful things have happened. Um, since, since starting this yeah, like, I, from inception, like you guys got a dog. Yeah. Um, like from yeah, the yeah, beginning yeah. of these conversations, dogs, yes. we got our puppies and we moved and we, we've done so many things and it's, uh, it's been it's been awesome. Yeah, it's been nice to settle down and kind of focus on stuff. I think like the big thing uh, that a lot of us would would say is a, is a big part of it is that we just kind of have people in the same house have the same like mindset and mm-hmm. same mentality towards like content creation because I don't know what you guys living situations were before, but people looked at me with like the craziest look on my face or on mm-hmm. their face when I would did anything content wise. Like I'm gonna go do this for Twitter. I'm gonna go like stream yeah. for four hours. Like, but there's other stuff to do. Go outside. I'm like, yeah. but I want to do this. Like, come on. The <laughs> first, the, like, like, give me shit. <laughs> I was I, I had been streaming for like two weeks, and I were like two to three weeks, and I was so happy with how, how it was going. And I had friends that were kind of had previously like worked in that industry and that I thought could recognize how miserable I had been mm-hmm. and how happy I was, who I was just like, I want to do so many things, and I'm so excited. And they were like, well, stop streaming. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody wants That's to watch. Great. Nobody, literally verbatim, well, if you want those things, stop streaming. Nobody wants to watch a 26-year-old Twitch streamer. <laughs> and I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say that they probably would say otherwise nowadays. But Yeah. Yeah. You know. um, well, so uh, would you like to transition us into our since we're about the halfway point? To uh, our, I guess we're almost to there, our yeah. second yeah, topic, yeah, yeah, yeah. as as is uh, per usual around well, this time. Well, since we're kind of nailing down <laughs> the social media platforms or just kind of the internet in general, we went over Twitch last time, so I thought we'd kind of flip the coin over to YouTube since we've been focusing on that as kind of an FPS, you know, forefront on stuff. So we YouTube. Well, it's, it's the internet. You, you jump know. into a tube and get processed into carved meat it's great <laughs> but anyway youtube yeah um i thought we would kind of start on who we used to watch way back in the day for all of us kind right? of kind of your first yeah. youtubers that kind of introduced you to content because I, I youtube is probably my first website that i mm. like binged a lot yeah definitely. Uh, i used to be on Newgrounds a lot before youtube yeah same um but youtube definitely took the forefront as soon as it existed so mm-hmm. i think that was a, a platform that i would want to focus on because i i'm not posting on Newgrounds nowadays so why not <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of did uh yeah. but youtube um who was your guys favorite youtuber when you started watching youtube for me it's like so uh, for me it would be pewdiepie like mm-hmm. but back when he was playing like amnesia slender like all the like the scary games you that's whenever meme. i found yeah right so that's whenever i found we screaming about <laughs> barrels child. Scr- uh, yes what does he call he used to call them nine-year-olds now they're 19 year olds um <laughs> but uh screaming about barrels and all that that's where like i like that was probably the most consistent youtuber i watched but the thing I think that I watched the most getting into YouTube, it wasn't particularly like a creator, uh-huh. but it was Machinima. 
anything yes, to do with Machinima. I remember so Machinima. My favorite things were those Halo music videos. <laughs> uh, Scripps talked about it yeah. a little bit last week, but like those Halo music videos, if you ever yeah. watched those, where they'd play a song and they'd act it out in the game. Uh, stuff like that, Inside Gaming, which deals with a lot yes. of people who oh, transfer to Funhouse. Inside Gaming was one of my Yeah, so like yep. Bruce Green, who was in G4, um, Gaming, who's oh. a phenomenal Twitch streamer. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Adam Kovic, Lauren Sontag, a lot of these people that were in Inside Gaming, and then they transitioned into something I watch now, but we'll probably talk about that later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, how about for you? Um, so when I first started, like, because I, I remember I, I, I'm older than you, um, so I don't know if you uh, would do this. I, I will like but when I first, uh, you know, accessed YouTube, it was literally to watch music videos. I, w- I was mm-hmm. loving it. Mm-hmm. And so when okay. I got, and one of my favorite things that I started discovering with content creators was these ones who would do covers, but they would make these fun, creative YouTube videos. So it was like Sam Sue um, and Alex and all of them. And they would make, they would bring other content creator friends and they would mm-hmm. make these cool Co- collabs, and um, collabs and they'd be these entertaining YouTube videos. And I cannot remember the name of the one that um, int- ended up introducing me to my first like content creator um but it was this video where they had done and somebody who is watching this please comment it if you know it um but they took a bunch of mashups of songs and they were like at a party and they were having conversations and they would they would go to talk and they would sing parts of the song to be in the conversation and there was this mm. whole party scene hmm. and they would do this it's like lee but it would have a lot of, it had like cameos of other uh, YouTubers mm. and stuff like that. So I had a lot of recommended. And then the very first one that was recommended to me out of that, um, that was similar to, was Jenna Marbles. Amanda yeah. loves Jenna yeah. Marbles. And I <laughs> fell in love with every, every single thing Jenna Marbles did. This was back when like the content she was pushing out is when it was like like having sex dressed as a guy. Yeah. Um, what, what girls see when having sex, what guys see when having sex. Um, Those are so funny. They're, they're, so, they're still some of <laughs> the top still, quality still content. They're so funny. And they weren't high production quality. She was drawing a mustache on her face, putting a hat on backwards, and had a camera sitting there. It was, and it was yeah. the funniest stuff I'd ever ever seen and then it was just spiraling from there you know what i mean mm-hmm. it was all the content creators that she was doing stuff with and it was just recommended and it was just this simple some of the the funniest things that you will still find on the internet and i give so many props and I, you know i it's all of our dreams to have the best production quality on everything but there's so much props to the people who mm-hmm. started out as YouTubers, who it wasn't this crazy camera yeah. and anything. They yeah. were just doing goofy yep. stuff with a marker and talking. They were just having fun. And having fun. And right after that is when Vine hit. Yeah, and then it just kind of <laughs> took then, a wrecking ball. <laughs> but even before it became high production Vine, that was some of the best stuff on the internet was just these little these people just saying yeah. stuff for six seconds. And it was a lot of those YouTube... It was incredible. It was so <laughs> I loved it. 10 second videos it's... on YouTube were just gold. Oh my God. It was so good. And the, so that was my kind of falling yeah. in love with YouTube. I, I, I found Sam Sue and all these covers and, and cool videos and mm-hmm. recommended Jenna Marbles. And then from there, it was just all the simple, hilarious comedy. It was the greatest mm-hmm. thing. I, there's still the funniest videos in the world if I just want to watch stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, so how about you? Well, I started, um, actually it was funny because I hated like news programs and all that. And Mm -hmm. there was this guy called SXE Phil, Sexy Phil, that Mm -hmm. he went by. And he just took like an unbiased like approach to like news stories. And he just made it so funny. And I watched him Mm -hmm. all the time, branched over to this guy named Shay Carl. I don't know if you ever heard Mm -hmm. that guy. He was kind of a vlogger. He kind of spearheaded vlogging. And then he knew a guy called Charles Trippy. Uh, Charles Trippy and Ali Speed were really like they were like a dynamic duo back in the day. They did so much cool stuff. They vlogged every single day, mm-hmm. just ten minutes, boom, every single day. And I watched it like religiously for like three or four years. Yeah, I, junior high and like the starting of high school for me was just those guys every single day. Funny story is that actually Ali Speed like hosted me one day, and I had no idea. I was like, oh, hi, mm-hmm. Feral Wife. Hi, uh, thank you so much for that for that rate. It was like two hundred people. I was like, that's insane. And so mm-hmm. I checked out her channel. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I watched her for like half a decade, yeah. like religiously, and yeah, I like yeah. myself. I'm like, oh, this is gonna seem super weird, but like, <laughs> uh, I know everything about I, you. Like, I watched your YouTube channel like from the beginning to like mm-hmm. five years into it, and like, yeah, I was yeah. just like, I was like shocked by it. And her and I are actually really good friends nowadays. Like, That's awesome. We meet up at events and just talk. And I was just like, this is so weird. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. So huh. I definitely say uh, Ali Speed really spearheaded a lot of mm-hmm. like early YouTube content for me because she was just a wacky person that yeah. just lived life and just recorded her journey. Well, so for everybody, was there any like communities you super got involved in with mm. YouTube? Because I know it's a little easier with Twitch because of chat and interaction for that. 
but videos you kept up with every upload, oh, yeah. interacted mm-hmm. in the comments, tried to be a part yeah. of what's going on. Is yep. there any communities that you had like that? Uh, I don't know if you know like Psychic Pebbles and all those animator I've, guys. I've, yeah, I heard uh, them. I heard the names. <laughs> like just like the crazy animator group. There used to be this podcast I listened to called Sleepy Sleepy Cabin. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a whole bunch of these new grounds editors and, and animators and voice actors that they they did so many projects for the last twenty years that they just kind of lived together and yeah. they're just the craziest people <laughs> ever. And they just make such cr- crazy stuff like animation and stuff. I've been involved with that community since like I was ten. Yeah, like I, I love those guys. Oh yeah, definitely. How about you? No, so that was the thing. Is like the first community involvement really for me. That's what made me fall in love with Twitch. Oh, so, okay, gotcha. Um, because everything before I loved consuming YouTube, but anything of being a part of it mm-hmm. just scared me. Because anytime I mentioned it, people were yeah. like, "No." Yeah, um, yeah. I wish, I wish I dove into YouTube communities. I don't know who the person I'd be, mm-hmm. um, if I'd been a lot less scared. But no, that was Twitch for me. Twitch yeah, was definitely. my first time really getting involved with gotcha communities along with content. Gotcha. Okay. So for me, you guys probably heard me say it a million times. But uh, Fun House is uh-huh. my yeah. huge one that yeah, I just still watch love. Every day. <laughs> oh yeah, I just lo- I've been watching Fun House for oh, since, funny. since yeah. they were created. Yes, because they all came together from uh, yeah from Machinima and Inside Gaming, and then they made their selves. And now they have so many people out and all that. But yeah, I watch like every video, every podcast because they do Dude Soup. Mm-hmm. They do like uh, kind of like a viewer game like thing with um, Grand Theft Auto. So they'll play with some of their top like contributors and people that are like supporters. And they'll just play Grand Theft Auto, random custom made maps with them, and just yeah. do that and yeah. record it, do the highlights. Um, so yeah, I like follow those, be in the comments, like be around with a lot of those people. Um, so that's why at TwitchCon this last year, I got to meet Bruce, uh, which funny, ironically enough, just left Funhouse right before TwitchCon. Yeah, um, but so it was still like, so it was like, still uh, cool though to be like <laughs> ah, like I watched yeah. all so much stuff he's been moments. in. Yeah. Oh, you captured yeah. it. <laughs> um, no, so he's, he's, that was a really cool thing. Yeah. But yeah, so that was probably my first one I was involved in, which was which would be Funhouse for me. Awesome. Yeah, I had a similar uh, experience with Couchop. You probably yeah, you know, know a little yeah, bit about mentioned. them, but just they stem from Machinima as well, which yeah. is funny. So it's like it's like a little off brand yeah. kind of Funhouse. Well, because I think Machinima was just such a of inhabitants it's of huge. gamers, yeah. right? Like these, they not even so that. Like, people. well, yeah, gaming news, like gaming people, creators, people who've been involved in. Like, uh, I always point to Adam Kovic, but like he's this insanely phenomenal Photoshopper, just really good at all of it. Yeah. Um, but he's also like was very involved with the Halo scene. Yeah. So not just the competitive scene, but like he literally wrote Halo fanfic, <laughs> like stuff <laughs> like that. Um, but like he would write stuff like that and be super involved with the Halo community, super knowledgeable about that, and then like. Uh, Lawrence is all about uh, like anime f- and all the cyberpunk stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just take all these different people from Machinima and put them together. And I think Rooster Teeth is the one that took a lot of those people up and made those larger. Like I mean, yes, yeah, I even uh-huh. think back to another hey, our YouTube thing was uh, Red vs. Blue. Got every, any, I don't know yeah. if you, any of you guys I, watched I, Red vs. Blue. I, I briefly went over it. Yeah, well, so like, and I think Rooster Teeth just kind of like very well, quickly because they have Achievement Hunter, Couch they, they Chop, filled all the that, void so. that was like yeah, gaming Machinima. content yeah. that they, they tried to. I, I'm forgetting the game, like the the game review, like news station. G four, I think so. That's the one I'm, I think. It, it was a lot. long time ago on cable, but it, that was kind of what was trying to like. There was supposed mm-hmm. to be like a gamer news like yeah. station, and didn't do well yeah. on cable, and that's because everyone was on the internet for mm-hmm. some reason. Uh, but well, why? Uh, yeah, that's so dumb. the void was that everybody's on the internet. Let's make a show on the internet, yeah. and, on the internet, and yeah, it was yeah. YouTube. So Machinima was just like everybody just do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and just throw it at yeah, it, and through, the good yeah. stuff will rise up, and the bad stuff will just mm-hmm. get lost in, in uh, under the good stuff. So yeah, and then Machinima just kind of like they had a big fizzling out. Like I think the whole company went out. Right. Well, what, what happens is that a lot of people the good people branched off and yeah. did their own thing and then you just left machinima with people that were salty that the good stuff wasn't there anymore and they yeah. just kind of pieced out so yeah. that's yeah, kind of what then, happens yeah but then things obviously evolve and keep going you yeah. know and see where they're at well so is there any for me at least personally i have a few in my head that you can think of maybe they don't have to be classics but like just a solid favorite youtube video if you have a classic that'd Aww. be cool for me to give you guys an idea one of my favorite videos I, I loved his uh the youtuber was and he still does content i think his name's uh it's like Niga Higa, yeah, uh-huh. right. Yep, yep. So how to be ninja? Yep, <laughs> was one of the like one of my oh, favorite YouTube yeah. videos I of watched all time. All of his stuff. Yeah, the how yep. to be ninja, how to be gangster, all that. Like, and it's so funny. You watch it now, it's like almost cringy, but like at the time, dude, like you, people ate this shit up. Like it was so funny. It was just so innovative. Yeah, and stuff didn't that, exist. That's one that for sure off the top of my head would be a top video for me. I'm trying to remember. Do you have any videos. ones that come to mind? It doesn't have to be classic. It could be like modern if if you. If you, if you can think of one. Oh, my God. Top ones that I'm thinking of now, and I can't remember the first time I saw it. Uh, I mean, 
it wasn't too long ago, but now I can't stop consuming it. It's literally anything from, like, Soviet Womble. Oh, um, yes. Or oh, stop, oh stop. I love him. My favorite all-time thing that he has ever done is him just, uh, is just playing CSGO. <laughs> it is hands down. I don't know how long he spends editing these videos. Months. Months. <laughs> it Months. has to be, but he, he, he eats them out so easily. It is the funniest gameplay you will ever watch. And I think for the top shelf of it, when people a decade from now look back to like top gaming co like videos that have been yep, uploaded Womble, that weren't stream up uploads, mm -hmm. it'll be Soviet Womble. Yep. Or like tying right there with me is like internet uh, internet historian. Oh, okay. Those videos are, I, I can watch them constantly. Mm -hmm. I can consume them constantly. Those are the funniest thing in my top. Yeah, this, him playing CSGO is my favorite, favorite one from Soviet Womble. And then Internet Historian doing the whole, we made you watch it, the Fallout yeah. 76 video. <laughs> it was good. I loved it. It's the greatest thing ever. It's just so good because it's like, he, he's talking about an event. But he's so meme and he's all of this stuff and all of this. And he'll take one event that should have been the most boring thing to explain. And it'll be the funniest yet informative <laughs> video yep. you have ever seen in your life. It's something you expect to be like shallow as like a puddle. And it's like vast as an yeah, ocean. Yeah. He, he creates the story. Yeah, <laughs> he is one of the only people that I think that I can genuinely watch supremely long videos of. Like mm -hmm. that Fallout video was yeah. like almost half an hour, if not mm -hmm. over half an hour. Yeah, yeah. And the whole time I was just like, okay, consuming content. <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to think of a video a I watched like every day in junior high, and there's only one coming to mind. And uh, I don't know if you know who Ego Raptor is. Oh yeah, um, his <laughs> awesome Ego series. Raptor. Like I would yeah. just like playlist it, and yeah. just watch them every day after That's school. You're like, ah, <laughs> like it's been a hundred times, but I still yeah. love it. Well, so, you know, uh, one one that just came to mind for me was uh, do you guys remember Critical? <laughs> this, uh, yep. what's up what's up you guys Penguins, critical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. what's up guys critical. I loved that dude, dude I watched him religiously yeah. oh, he's, he's good oh my god he's so just the monotone voice and just not giving a shit yeah he's just so like oh, just, uh, you, him playing Quop. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like his breakthrough video yo like, Quop, yeah if, if you know who oh, yeah. if you know who critical is see that, that that video is like the one that everybody has seen if you know critical yeah oh that yeah no that's that was a good one a good creator too and I'm even thinking like uh Cool things that I've found through YouTube, just ones that like I think are funny because they start as YouTube channels and now there's stuff that's a like, yeah. way bigger. Mm -hmm. So I liked. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the piano guys. Um, it's just a cello so player I and a piano I've seen, player. Yeah, I think yeah. I've seen yeah. a couple of them. And they didn't, just like, did like them really yeah, yeah. Well, no, so they just did like pretty cool, just songs. They did covers of yeah. songs, but the thing is, they always like shot in really unique areas. Uh -huh. And then yeah, now they like tour and do yeah. concerts and all yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of careers. Like, they literally yeah, and they literally airlifted a piano to like the top of like a plateau cliffside uh -huh. and just shot their video up there and that's like what made them unique they're talented musicians but yeah. had like a like eye for that kind of thing uh, speaking of musicians you do know? you remember mystery guitar man oh i do not mystery guitar man was cool because he was like the first guy to do like the jump cut editing for notes so oh, he okay. just play notes and take certain like cuts of them and oh, frame them up okay and play songs just like sitting there and just like his guitar would just be like reverbing the note uh -huh. and he'd just be standing there oh, okay <laughs> so he just like played a song holding up a guitar yeah, and yeah. just like cutting it through and just like what how does that doesn't make sense yeah to me. well and the, the other um, one i'm thinking of as far as like unique content that's a little stemmed aside from gaming um, I'm literally blocking on the name, but maybe one of you guys could fill it in. I, I think it's Bill Wurtz or something yes. like that. Uh -huh. yeah. So his history of the world. Yes. That's like mm -hmm. a 19 minute video and it's amazing. <laughs> I listened to a podcast where they uh, interviewed him and he said he spent about a year and a half on that video. Yeah, that's, that's insane. <laughs> oh my God. It's insane. I remember the classic video, the very first like YouTube video that I think I watched a million times. It's the stupidest thing in the world, but I'll still laugh at it. Do you remember uh, End of the World? Yep. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I was in middle school or like beginning of high school. It, yeah. Like it was literally when like people weren't regularly watching YouTube. Mm. That was the funniest, dumbest thing in the entire world. And I think I watched it 500,000 oh, times. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I still watch it. Because as long as I, it's time is like I was running into the impossible game and I yep, see people I do those. impossible game mm -hmm. clips and things like that. Yeah. That. Oh my God. That I, kind yeah. of content. I beta oh. tested for the Impossible game. I talked to the, the oh, really? guy who made it. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, actually, I, uh, I helped him I'm a few so levels. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I, I talked to him a little bit because I, I was really heavy into Newgrounds back then. That's where mm. he kind of like threw it out there. Yeah. Mm. And it was like the first rendition of it, and it was horrible. And oh, I was yeah, like, okay, let's, let's just like, I, I sat down with him on a couple of levels and told him like little little tricks he should do with them. Yeah, but yeah. He made just a phenomenal game after that, which yep. was the Impossible game. I, I forget what he called it the first time when yeah. he put it up, and we just kind of like talked about it. But I think that was the first rage 
That was me raging at a game. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, oh my God. I was like, no, 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 make well, this harder. <laughs> another, another like YouTube thing that I thought was really interesting. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows or remembers uh, Das Boshit. And he did the Gmod Idiot Box. Yes. Yep, you guys yep, remember yep. that. So the first one of those, like that was super interesting to me because you took a game like Gmod. And like back then, Gmod didn't have as many mods, ironically yeah. enough. But then by the end of their like 12th, 13th episode of that, it looked really good. Yeah. Like it yeah. looked like he was making quality stuff, like almost animated movie stuff. Yes. But like with just a game, you know, but making scenes from other movies and just, it was really clever. I loved, I loved those videos. See, I remember like way, way back, like when even Newgrounds was beginning, like the first things to take over was like Claymation. Yeah. So. Oh my God, I love Claymation. What what they would do was like, they would just frame by frame have these little clay creatures tell a story and Mm -hmm. they would always like go against these like action figures or something and and just fight. And it was so cool. I don't know what it was, but I, I loved it. And there was. There was, like, action movies available back then. But, mm-hmm. yeah, these little clay monsters fighting and, like, going into balls and, like, yeah. turning into, like, their different things mm-hmm. to fight each other. It was so, like, creative because it seemed, like, real. Yeah. It was, like, the first thing that was, like, real but still stemmed from, like, an animator's background. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to get into claymation so bad until I learned literally how long it takes yeah, for oh, yeah. it alone. Weeks, um, months. One for of my favorite things about Parks and Rec is when he's like, I'm going to work on oh, a claymation yeah. <laughs> episode. And he's like, I've been working on this for days. Yeah. Five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's like, all more. I got. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, and yeah, I'm just like, oh, I'm just like going back. I know. Like all the things. I, I love just, doing this. Yeah. No, it's like a fun little nostalgia trip. We did the nostalgia trip with like games we played before too, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, I even remember Flash games like way back in the day. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah. I mean, that was, that was the best. I remember <laughs> like, a, uh, what was it called? It was like maybe not Total War or something, but it was where it was like stick stick figures and it was like a turn based, oh and you just like aimed a gun or you threw a grenade or you kick people. You know what I'm talking about? I know what game. I don't know what you're talking about. But that I played that game well, we all watched, the time with friends. Similar, we watched Stick War maybe. Yeah, something like that. We watched the video a couple weeks ago of the animator just doing the stick figure fighting constantly over and over mm-hmm. and over again and people brutally coming in and murdering it yeah the badness so ma- series yeah. <laughs> yeah so many of these games just used to be so simple like that and it was the most entertaining thing in the yep. world it was just dumb you would just like instantly die you get like mm-hmm. to this like, a death yeah well you, uh, do you guys know a game called castle crashers yes i do not that stemmed off of guys from Newgrounds. yeah i would they, figure they they made new grounds mm-hmm. and they premiered their first like game on it and it was alien hominid i don't know if you've ever heard that i've game. heard the name i don't know but that was the stem up to castle crashers oh, okay. which was their like big release and it's crazy to think that that only existed because of new grounds like, yeah and <laughs> stuff like new grounds fathered youtube yeah you know? exactly yeah and a lot of people went from new grounds to youtube yeah um and really expanded their careers like a lot yeah, well, and like even the you mentioned Ego Raptor. So one of my favorites of his, that's a video that I I will watch on repeat mm-hmm. is uh, his Sequelitis series. If you ever heard those, he just takes a sequel of a game and explains whether or not it's better oh, yeah. or, or or he or just worse. goes. Su- it's but pretty it's, much like no, but it's like super smart though because he gets like really deep into game design, level design. Yeah. So you're actually like learning. But my favorite one that he does is Mega Man, and oh <laughs> know, my god, it's video. so great you and i watched that <laughs> yeah the first oh i love it too. yep yep in san jose i love that video dude i can show anybody that video and yeah, be like you're just gonna I, love this it's great like, he, he gets so intense over like the most minor yeah. details too yep. lemons like you're shooting the lemon oh, i love that love it all well yeah and then uh I, I mentioned pewdiepie before but to me it's always really crazy to look at like you kind of mentioned was uh starting with just like a you know nothing really like a crappy laptop or whatever mm-hmm. and that's all he did he played call of duty you know and he just did that beauty pie like thing that's all he did yeah. and that's what he became and then now he's the top individual like youtuber you know and to, to see yeah ever to see yeah. where that's from to where it is and and he obviously has his his lines of um or his, his history of like publicity and and not good publicity and and sketchy mm-hmm. things like that but like I think overall, my opinion at least, he's a very honest content creator. So it's really cool to see that start from literally. I mean, I don't remember when his first YouTube video was. I think it was like 2005 or something, right? It was yeah. for, like forever yeah. ago. To be in 2020 now and like just to see that growth and even that that, that to me is like before Ninja yeah. was like the first person that you heard. Oh. This person's making millions. Mm-hmm. Well, he's like, immortalized. What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like Ninja will always be the one that like paved the way for Twitch or yeah, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But he didn't do this first. Yeah. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's not what Ninja's known for. Like, people like PewDiePie are immortalized. Yeah, exactly. They are the first. They are the originals. They are the greatest. And it's like, he could happily retire. You know what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. And well, yeah. he'll always be PewDiePie. Everyone will know 
who that is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think that's where a lot of just people in general got the motivation to buy a webcam and just turn it on yep. and just try videos 100%. and see how it goes, you know? So it's kind of cool to see that and create a lot of the people that we have around now, you know? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think we, we're going to try to, like, branch off into potentially what YouTube could become yes. kind of in the future if you could, like, theorize, like, what, what you expect from the platform, what you would want from it, like, any changes. I mean, I am obviously very biased towards Twitch. Twitch has given me everything uh -huh. in my life. Um, I would love YouTube to... I. I know that they're going to focus more towards uh, you bringing on the content creators. They literally just signed PewDiePie yeah. exclusively uh -huh. yeah. um, to be, you know, to gaming exclusively on YouTube and things like that. And they're making those power moves. Um, and so, if they're going to stick with that route, they, re I, I would love to see improvements yes. through that platform because it is, it's hard to find, it's hard to watch, it's hard to any of those things. But outside of that, I wish YouTube would go back to focusing on. Somebody made a point. I think it was uh, Michael Reeves or one of them where it was like, wow, for the, it's been the first time in like 10 years that two of the people on the top 10 trending page are actually creators. Mm -hmm. And they aren't yep. like Vivo, YouTube yeah. video, and all of this. I wish if YouTube if YouTube wants to honor what it's trying to do with growing creators, Not then they need to yeah. they need yeah. to showcase creators more yep they I need agree. to find a way if they want to still have music videos the top trending and the most views they need to separate it easier mm -hmm. and you can have a setting when you log on to where i want to see creators as the top 10 trending yeah. you know what i mean and then i can tab over to if i want music videos or things like that i want to see youtube get back to focusing on these creators because youtube is the original it was before vine it is before any of these yep. it is the original creator of content creators it is the home of all of them, and I would love to see it go back to being like, we can create people. Mm -hmm. yeah, people I mean, can find their home here, and they can be discovered, and they don't have to be drowned out by a million things. YouTube has one of the smartest algorithms in the world, and they have bots running constantly that mm -hmm. are flagging everything else. They can code an algorithm and make it work to help be a content creation site again. I mean, I, you guys can probably speak testament to this, but a lot of content creators that I know that are pretty well known on the YouTube platform that they have so many complaints and so many yeah. frustrations and just, yeah, I, I, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Yeah. Like, I, I think there's a better way to handle it. You're and watching mega million YouTubers sit here and be like, my, well, my video is taken down. Yep. No. Taken well, down yeah, for was, three days and they, say, they sent me an apology. Yeah. But... Well, my feedback was going to say is I, I think they need to be more clear and either, either just clear, but like lighten up maybe, or just be very specific about what is under copyright strikes and, how does that work? How do videos get taken uh, down and why? Yeah. The gray like area is so big. Well, yeah, and PewDiePie will literally say in videos, just because I, I, I watch a lot of his videos, he'll do ones and then it'll get taken down and he just uploads it with him swearing a bunch. Because he's like, I don't care. It's going to get taken down anyway. I don't care. Yeah. So but then he, there'll be he's random Minecraft episodes. able to do that. Yeah, of course, but others can't. And yeah, that's exactly. what sucks. And that's yeah. what sucks. And like, I yeah. feel like a lot of people who are on that, that route of like almost being full time content creator are so scared of doing it. Yeah. And so scared of branching out. Well, even out that, like content. taking risks. Yeah. Like branching yeah, you out. You just like you're can't saying. do it. And you have it to sucks. do what works. Yeah. Well, we, really, we literally watched a video last night of a guy talking. He's a he millions of followers, has had mm -hmm. multiple millions of view videos. Um, he gives these breakdowns of music things, and he's the guy who made there was this big thing, this copyright of when you know Katy Perry's Dark Horse went viral, like one of the most viewed videos on YouTube. It got copy striked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Katy Perry, Warner Chapel got copy yeah. striked um, because they said that um, they stole the melody from uh, J uh, Joyful Noise or whatever <laughs> the song that had come out. They ended up this guy, this guy, this with a huge platform, did this whole video defending. Yep. her and it was like this is bad for musicians mm -hmm. this is bad for content creators you shouldn't let this happen he literally did a breakdown on a piano playing parts of joyful noise playing parts of um dark horse saying how this shouldn't correlate how this didn't work how none of this uh happened together defending this video had tens millions of views mm -hmm. um he just made another video um a couple weeks ago or or whatever because even despite all of that katie perry lost the lawsuit Joyful Noise won. Oh, they God. had that. Yeah, they had insane. it. But then his video got copy stricken. Yeah. By Warner Chapel and Katy Perry, mm -hmm. saying that he was using <laughs> in, in a section of, them, yeah. of Dark Horse. The ironic part was that the section that they segmented and copy strike was the part of him playing a Joyful Noise. Yeah. 
And it's just these corporations who do not care about anything. And YouTube took it down. Literally, if anyone at YouTube, and it was manually done, they tell you at the bottom whether yeah, it was manually no, done or any of these things. YouTube took it down anyway. YouTube didn't go, this is a video. This wasn't even that song. This is him playing the other song that won a lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's yeah. just the biggest bullcrap, too, because it was for five seconds of the video, and they took the ad revenue for the whole 20 minute yeah. video well there's no there's no like repercussion for these companies claiming videos yeah there's no punishment yeah they usually if you fail your claim yeah there is no repercussion so at they all just there's no, no like mark on there. it but if a creator gets three copyright ca- they're claims done. they're done they're done yeah. straight up done yeah channel's gone yeah so that's something they, i think they, they, they I have like no to see loyalty with. to their millions of followers so the, for either. the future that's one thing i would want change, yeah, same. personally that's just pretty much my it's scary it is so scary yeah well so with that do uh do we have any questions, or you want to transition us out? Um, I think that's kind of it. We went over the origin story, went over YouTube. Yeah. Past, present, future. I mean, a mm-hmm. uh, lot was said today. A yeah. lot of fun. I hope you had fun. Yeah. yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, it the origin stories are over, which means we have to actually think of things oh to God. talk about. Yeah. yeah. I have a couple ideas. <laughs> oh, good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, again, too, for those of you watching or listening, if you guys want stuff for us to talk about, obviously within reason, uh, we have a channel on our Discord. Mm-hmm. There's a link in the description. Uh, you can go in there and suggest things for uh, at least Lando and I to talk about, and hopefully we'll have some other people talking with us. And going forward, uh, whoever wishes to be on the podcast, probably up to about four people. Um, We'll be here, and it'll just kind of be free reign yeah. and more, more kind of yeah. a not a not an interview, but kind of just kind of a everybody yeah, talk, everybody spirit. Kind of like the it. last half of this one, yeah. yeah. So exactly, no no more origins, unfortunately. Ooh. We'll probably have some more <laughs> sprinkled in, but no no yeah. big chunks. But yeah, that was episode five of the FPS podcast. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next week with episode six. Bye. Bye.